coming after Bill's talk, I really want to start with the first demonstration that Leslie came to. It was in 1973. It was the October War. Um, I mean, how do you explain the, uh, the October War? <laughs> the Yom Kippur. The, uh, the land that um, Israel had occupied in the 67 war. And you can imagine the, you know, virulent anti-Palestinian, anti-Arab climate. The party in Buffalo, the branch in Buffalo, organized a demonstration outside a Zionist event that was happening at um, the big hall where the Buffalo Symphony is. And we came with what we called our combat boots. And we were, you know, organized in squads. And we were ready for what um, I don't think turned out to be a big fight, but really we were ready for it. Leslie, that was the first demonstration that Leslie came to. A Jewish trans worker in Buffalo. She heard about this demonstration from her coworker Molly. <laughs> and Leslie came to this demonstration and found her home in Workers' World Party. We lost Leslie last Saturday after a long illness. Leslie now was so well, so well known, respected, and loved in the LGBTQ communities. There has been an outpouring of moving messages, especially the, you know some of the reading messages on Facebook of. Uh, <laughs> Can't, countless people whose lives were influenced by Leslie. And uh, there have been uh, lots of obituaries. I mean, I think I only knew a few of, you know, a few of them from um, The Advocate, the longtime gay magazine, The Guardian in England, The Buffalo Evening News, The Atlantic, a very moving piece, Fight Back News, and I'm sure it goes on and on. Workers' World newspaper, had the extensive full page article written by Leslie's spouse, Minnie Bruce Pratt, up online all week. And it's in the printed edition of the paper now for everyone to read. And the party will be scheduling a memorial sometime in the future, you know, whenever we figure is the best time, when we can really go over Leslie's life and enormous contributions to the party, to the LGBT struggle, especially the trans struggle, and the revolutionary struggle, really. So 1973 was when Leslie joined the party, and she came to New York a year later in 1974, and I'm sorry, worked on every mobilization and campaign of the party, starting with the Boston March Against Racism, where she went to, to Boston to organize. And you can read a lot about all the different, you know, in Minnie, in Minnie Bruce's um, obituary article, you can read a lot about Leslie's history. Leslie began learning to write for Work As Well newspaper when she came to New York. And was the editor of the political prisoner page I'm sorry, for 15 years and eventually became a managing editor of Workers World, which he continued really for the rest of her life. Um, only her severe illness um, prevented in recent years. In the 70s and the 80s, Leslie began researching through history, for the f began researching for the history. Something I lift it up. Is that what it is? Sorry, this is <laughs> for someone who works on sound. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Leslie began researching extensive research for the history of trans of trans people, and she found an enormous, enormous amount. 
and with the encouragement of founding comrade Dottie Ballin. Leslie began to apply Marxism to understand the oppression of trans people and the road to liberation. In 1992, the party published Leslie's groundbreaking pamphlet, Transgender Liberation, a movement whose time has come. Right. <laughs> that was the same time also that Leslie wrote the novel, Stone Butch Blues, which she was able to get published the next year. It's so based on her experiences of her life in the factories and gay bars of Buffalo, Western New York in the 60s before Stonewall. The novel expressed in a way that really hadn't been done before. The experience as a butch lesbian, as a gender non-conforming person, and it just touched a chord. It just really, um, people, you hear in the messages and, uh, that, are, that people are putting out in the obituaries, how this book changed people's lives in uh, being able, giving an understanding of themselves that was powerful. <laughs> the book sold hundreds of thousands of copies, was translated into seven languages. It's been out of print for years now. And Leslie, right up until the last week of her life, was working on a 20th anniversary free version of it. Her book, Transgender Warriors, from Joan of Arc to Dennis Rodman, was published in 1996 and was able to incorporate a really lot of the, the research th and the, that Leslie had done. And it had a huge impact on the growing trans movement. And Leslie had a big impact on the growing trans movement at that time. It was really a time when the T was being added to LGBT. <laughs> Um, it was really when the trans movement was coming forward and Leslie in that book had a, a huge impact and her, um, her writings are used uh, in college, colleges and academia, you know, wherever, any kind of studying across this country and internationally. It's hard to explain, if you haven't seen it, how widely known and loved Leslie was. She was really an icon. Leslie was asked to speak and participate, I should say, too, especially among young people. And a few uh, LGBTQ young people and young people in general, and, and among a few generations. It's been, you know, a number of years. And Leslie was asked to speak and participate in events all over, up until her health made it not possible. The thing is that when Leslie spoke, she brought all the party's politics, skillfully and winningly. And I really think that's what people loved. She brought forward the struggle of trans people, and she also always talked about solidarity. She talked about fighting racism, and really the national question and self-determination anti-imperialism and the class struggle. And Leslie was always clear that she saw socialism as a road to liberation. Minnie Bruce says in the beautiful obituary in Workers' World that Leslie's last words were, hasten the revolution. Remember me as a revolutionary communist. Well, that is a message to her comrades, to us in the party, to hasten the revolution. Leslie Feinberg, presente.